Hello, everyone, and welcome to this August edition of P Talks, the virtual mm. speaker series partnership on employment and accessible technology. Uh, we host this talk on the third Thursday of the month, and P Talks is designed to showcase the various organizations and individuals whose work and innovations are advancing accessible technology in the workplace. My name is Josh Christensen. I'm the project director for PEAT, and I am glad to be hosting today's talk. Before we get started, I'm going to quickly review a few logistics. Uh, first and foremost, we will have time for Q&A at the end, so um, please enter your questions into the chat window you can see there at any time. Uh, and we will um, either jump in real time or save them for the end and try to get in as many questions as we can. So please utilize the chat window there. Uh, you can also use the chat window if you have any technical difficulties, any issues um, just logging on or hearing or whatever. Feel free to use that and we will try to triage and resolve any issues you're having. Um, you can download the presentation from our website, peatworks.org, P-E-A-T-W-O-R-K-S dot O-R-G. And we will have an archived recording which will be posted online following today's events. Um, see the information on the slide there should you need anything. Uh, additionally, uh, for folks interested in social media, we will be live tweeting today's events from our at PeteWorks um, address. So please feel free to join us and follow along. Uh, and really the best way to do that is to use the hashtag PeteTalks. So that's two T's and the S, hashtag P-E-A-T-T-A-L-K-S. And please include our guests if you'd like, um, at Rob underscore Sinclair, Robert, excuse me, at Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T underscore Sinclair, S-I-N-C-L-A-I-R. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our esteemed guest. We are pleased to welcome Rob. Uh, President of the International Association of Accessibility Professionals Global Leadership Team, who has worked in the accessibility field for 18 years or so. Uh, he's held a variety of roles within Microsoft in both engineering and corporate governments. He has been active across the industry, working with assistive technology developers, government agencies working towards employment and education, and helping to start cross-industry collaborations to advance the pursuit of accessible content and solutions. Um, in addition to being president of the IAAP Global Leadership Team, Rob is currently the Chief Accessibility Architect for Microsoft's, Microsoft's Global UX practice. And when he does find spare time among all these roles, Rob uh, <laughs> volunteers his time as a conservation, wildlife, and nature photographer to support campaigns for his favorite nonprofits in the Pacific Northwest where he resides. Uh, today, Rob will be talking about IAAP and its approach to encourage the growth of a worldwide accessibility profession. It's an important time in the global accessibility field because IAAP and G3ICT uh, recently announced their merger. So this webinar will cover information about IAAP's active member community education and certification programs to help us all keep up to date um, and keep our skills up to date uh, with tools and templates IAAP has created to help organizations build and run their own internal accessibility programs. So we are super excited to track. We've been tracking this topic. We're glad to discuss it and dive into it. Um, Rob has been a huge supporter of Pete and a very active member of our think tank. So uh, really thank you, Rob, uh, for, for always being a support to the field, um, to our organization, and to the issue on a whole. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Rob um, and let him uh, lead us through today's conversation. Well, thanks very much, Josh. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And uh, wow, it looks like we've got a lot of great people, a lot of uh, turnout here. There's a lot of great people on the line. So looking forward to this today. Thanks, everybody. So yeah, so what I really wanted to do is start off by sharing a little bit about how we got started on IAAP. Um, there was a group of us who were uh, already working in the field, and what we saw was this definite set of patterns. Um, one was the number of different roles, uh, job roles we needed to be involved in the solution creation process was growing. It's not just about designers and developers. It's about um, a very broad range of perspectives, all the way from 
HR, human resources, to marketing, to the business leaders that need to buy in and fund the work. So a really broad range of people, including training professionals. Um, the second is a lot of great work is happening around the world um, related to accessibility, but in many cases, there's isolation, and so people don't really know what other organizations on you know the other side of the ocean might have done to solve the problems that they're working to solve. So not a lot of um, really clear ways of sharing best practices and sharing what's working and what isn't working. Uh, the third is that you know, it's a really complex space. There's a lot to know, there's a lot to learn, and, and it's not a static environment, so there's a lot of things changing and growing. And all of this is also influenced by the fact that disability and aging and the use of mobile technologies is all really coming together in a way that means that these same solutions we were building originally for um, you know, traditionally diagnosed disabilities are really valuable for a much, much broader range of individuals. And so we were talking with G3ICT at the time, and they were looking at it in a slightly different way, but had some really complementary observations. Uh, for example, there's a large number of, uh, of, there are many activities around the world related to policy making, new laws, new regulations, or new procurement activities. And these are all focused on the challenge of really trying to incent or uh, perhaps force the right kind of outcomes from the companies and organizations building solutions and technologies. Um, there's, of course, the aging of the demo and, and the markets that I mentioned, the aging in the workforce. There's the shifting demographics in the balance of the younger populations that are contributing to social programs and services versus those people who are later in life and are starting to need to draw on those programs. Um, and we've seen, uh, you know, changes in the age of retirement um, in developed nations as well. So many people are choosing to work longer and later in life, or in some cases, they need to. And so all of this comes together to form this interesting fabric. And then on top of that, you have the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which has now been ratified by 166 countries, pretty phenomenal number. Um, and I, many people here may be familiar with this, but what ratification means is it's an actual commitment by that government to take specific actions related to creating an accessible digital society effectively, work, school, and education, and, and um, social environments for the disabled and the aging population. Uh, and so there's all these different factors coming together. And so our organizations were talking, many of us, you know, many people on the call here I see, we were all kind of sharing this shared sense that there's just a lot happening and we really um, didn't have a coordinated global effort that covers all these different dimensions. A lot of good individual things happening around the world, but we really wanted to try to bring it together. And if you haven't seen the G3ICT report from a couple of years ago, 2013, specifically around capacity building, we have a link here. I'd, I'd suggest you read it if you're interested in more of the context. It really does a fantastic job of, of framing out some of that, that opportunity. And so with all of this, we came up with this idea of forming a global profession around accessibility um, with this mission. It's really about defining, promoting, and improving the profession worldwide by investing in a couple of key areas, networking, education, and certification. And this isn't just focused on web accessibility or software. We believe this should be focused on creating accessible products and services and content because all of that comes together uh, to really create whatever those solutions are that we all need every day in today's more digital lifestyle. So with that mission, we identified four strategic goals. The first was let's create a successful, sustainable organization <laughs> so that you know we can really be organized and coordinated in our work around the world. Um, the third was, or the, the second was really helping an individual as that person, depending upon what their role is, what their core functions are, what their level of experience or expertise is, let's help them have a clear, excuse me, a clear path for developing their skills and staying up to date. The second is, more broadly, the organizations around the world, whether public or private sector, many of them need help understanding how do you create accessibility as a normal part of doing business or running, providing services or running you know, a business. 
Um, and then the fourth is really what stitches all of that together, which is this worldwide community of people who are dedicated and passionate about accessibility, trying to understand what works and what doesn't work, um, sharing what they've learned and you know the success stories they have of what has really proven to be effective, whether that's selling the business case to their leadership um, or creating a great solution for customers. So these are the four areas we really started going after um, as an organization. And to do that, we created a set of programs. Um, we invested in our online communities. We developed um, you know, groups of volunteers, part of our members, um, who wanted to work on each of these challenges and problem spaces. So this, we do have a set of online communities today where people are engaging every day to get questions answered, suggest their opinions, or um, just ask for help. Uh, we have professional ed education and certification. In particular, at CSUN this last year, we launched our first professional certification uh, in record time for an organization. I think we're one of the, the fastest to deliver its first certification um, that is an official credentialed product. Uh, and this is really the core competencies. It's, it's a long name. It's Certified Professional in Accessibility Core Competencies. Uh, the acronym is CPACC, so we just call it CPAC for short. Um, so the CPAC is really our first certification, and it's designed for anyone interested in the field of accessibility who wants to get a baseline knowledge of you know, what is accessibility, make sure they're up to speed on the common disabilities, what are assistive technologies, standards and policies around the world. Um, there are more coming because we realize that a single certification can't possibly serve the diverse range of people that are active in the, in the field. And so we have some really good feedback already on needing one around web accessibility and possibly one around public, uh, public policy, people working in the legal sector. Um, so we're really looking at that. We're also, we've already had feedback from the first round of people who've taken the exam for the CPAC. And we're going to go through and make some additional enhancements to, and this is where G3ICT can help us, really make sure that's representing the true global perspective as part of that core competency. Um, so in addition to the certification, we've also got those, um, we have, of course, a membership program for individuals and organizations. We participate in other events that are hosted like CSUN, like ACIA, uh, like M enabling conferences. Um, and then we also held our first standalone event last fall to really see what, to kind of explore this and see how would it work to have a dedicated event for us to do networking, really share ideas, and get to know each other as members of IAAP. Really popular. We were planning to have another one this fall. Because of the merger and all the activities to make sure we maintain continuity of operations and services, we've decided to delay that to next spring. So uh, we're disappointed about that, but we think that's the right thing to do uh, for our members. Uh, then we have a career center and then a set of other resources like a monthly newsletter, some tools and templates online, some bodies of knowledge. Uh, and this is really all designed to start to create um, a repository of content uh, that our members, whether organizational or individual, can use. And I think one of the key points here is that we've, what we've really been trying to do is not reinvent what has already been done in the industry. There's an incredible number of smart people who have already done fantastic work for accessibility. What we're trying to do is instead of reinvent, we want to try to amplify the good work that's already happened. Um, if there's a good book out there, um, I see Jeff Klein's on the call, for example, he wrote a great book on organizational accessibility and how do you incorporate that in. That's a great resource. We just want to amplify that and make, make sure people are aware of it. Um, we're working with the W3C on web accessibility and how do we think about when we talk about, a you know, creating a certification for web accessibility, but well, we clearly want to do that in partnership with W3C and Judy Brewer and the whole team over there. So I think that's one of the underlying core principles that is really important about IWIP is we're, we're here to help stitch together the great work that's happening um, and really amplify what is going well and then decide where is it we need to be investing our time and resources to start to fill the gaps or to take it to the next level. So as part of that, I want to I want to stop and, and do a poll here to understand what kinds of resources would be useful for you and your work around accessibility. Um, in particular, if there are things that we've listed that you think are really valuable, um, that would be great. 
um, love to get that feedback. And if there are other things we, you know, we're not doing, then love to hear that as well. So if we can tee up that poll, that would be fantastic. Thanks, Rob. We're going to pull up the poll. Um, folks should um, see it and be able to click. Um, if you're having any accessibility issues, you can use the chat window to enter your questions. Um, the question is, what IAAP programs and resources are valuable to you or your organization? And your options are online IAAP community, professional education, IAAP professional certifications, and online career center and job postings. We'll leave it open for one more second. Um, Rob, are you able to see the information coming in? I am. I want to fly in here. Great. So we're Definitely going to leave it open for one more second. Why don't we go ahead, uh, grab that information for your purposes, Rob, and we'll close it out and go back to the discussion. Do I need to broadcast that, or do you guys broadcast that? Um, you can go ahead and do it. If it's, I mean, I can do it for, since I asked the questions, but it was a, it was a fair distribution. Um, we have about, folks can probably see 40 44% <coughs> mentioned the online community. Another 50% said education. These are wacky numbers. Maybe you can click more than one. Um, there was a good you group can. that said. You uh, can. Okay, so, so it's multiple, multiple things. So, um, That's right. Two-thirds uh, thought the certification, which is kind of the big push that you all moved through, was uh, the most valuable resource. And another 20-plus percent uh, mentioned the online and career center. So lots of people clicking multiple uh, options that they see as valuable. Thank you. That's great. This is really nice feedback. I, I appreciate it. Um, and, and while I'm talking to this, you know, we, we have another poll also, which might be interesting if we can still pull it up. Uh, just to find out the composition of kind of what kinds of roles are represented by people on the call, if we could pull it up as well, that would be great if we can still do that. Um, so that's really helpful on the poll of the, the resources. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for that feedback. It sounds like we may be on the right track, um, so we'll keep on cranking on that. So second poll is up. I'm able to see it. hope folks are, too. Um, it says, what is your role within your organization? So trying to get a feel for who's, who's there. Uh, lots of options here. Uh, there's HR talent acquisition, management leadership, product designer development, educator trainer, uh, accessibility consulting, advocacy nonprofit, legal, regulatory, and the all-encompassing other. So we'll give folks a couple of minutes to chime in there. Looks like we have another decent distribution, um, heavy on the accessibility consulting, uh, also HR talent acquisition, management leadership. Um, got a fair amount of others in there. Of others, yeah. It's some product and design at about 11 percent. So a pretty, a pretty uh, good and diverse group you've got here. Yeah, that's great. That's really nice to see. Um, okay, well, perfect. Well, then let's go back. I, I only have a few more slides because I wanted to allow plenty of time for conversation as well. So with all of that context of kind of what we've been doing, I, I talked a little bit earlier about you know why we would think about this this merger with G2ICT. So, you know, it may be apparent, and hopefully it is, that our missions have been really well aligned from the beginning. We've always worked closely with G2ICT, um, in particular because of their global charter as part of the UN. Uh, the G2ICT, in case some people aren't familiar with it, that's the, the nonprofit that was started by the UN as the organization that would drive adoption and implementation of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So. You know, they have a really broad network of organizations and leaders that they work with in both public and private sector um, to help them understand the convention, what is really expected uh, for both the aging and disability populations, 
Uh, and then in many cases, um, once those organizations have decided, yes, they're committed to doing it, then they turn to GCICT and ask, okay, well, how do we go do this? Um, and that's where, you know, they pointed back to the community and the set of consultants and organizations around the world and also to us to say, hey, you know, IWP is actually trying to help um, amplify a lot of this great work and really pull it all together with this formal training and certification. Uh, and so it really seems like a great mutual benefit for us. Um, we both had some duplication of efforts, you know, even around events and newsletters and just day-to-day -day operations that we thought, well, if we came together, we, we'd get some immediate um, optimization there uh, to lower our costs. Um, but also, in particular, it's really that you know, it's their global reach and the conversations that they're having, which is a natural fit with the fact that we're really trying to amplify and draw together and grow this global network of, of people around the world in a variety of job roles who understand accessibility, why it's important, and how to do it. And so it's just a really great marriage. And so we're really excited about the, the decision. We feel really solid on that. And like I said, we are now working on making sure we get everything transferred over, everything's up and running. Um, and then we have a big meeting next month to really sit down and look back at our strategic priorities, look at what we're investing in for the next year. For example, I mentioned some, you know, some open questions about which certifications should come next. Um, and so we, we really want to set that course and then move back into to execution mode. And so that's one reason I was really excited about today's webinar is I think it's a great opportunity to hear from you. Um, since all of you are involved in accessibility, is what is it you know you would like to see um, GTICT and IWP do together? What is it we could really do to, to help improve and accelerate accessibility? Uh, and so with that, um, you know, some of our anticipated results are uh, you know no change in benefits and services for our members. Um, ex we expect that this will provide the opportunity to accelerate our global reach um, as a professional organization. Um, we also think in, you know, I mentioned this a little bit a minute ago, we think we can also help connect the professionals that we know about in different regions of the world with the organizations that are looking to invest in accessibility. So one of our hopes is that we can really become a great advocate and, uh, you know, a point of connection for the people around the world who do have expertise and may not be fully tasked. They may be looking for work. We'd love to be an organization that could help connect them up with organizations that have a need for accessibility. Uh, and and one of the overarching pieces here as well is, um, you know, expanding on the professional certification we've already built, um, you know, the existing one, renewing that content, um, expanding the number of, of skills that we're covering, um, and then also um, really looking to see what are the other strategic partnerships, what are the other organizations that are doing great work that we don't know about. Um, because like everyone else, we're individuals working in the field, right? I'm a volunteer for IWP just like everyone else is. And so um, I have a day job. I also have a hard time keeping track of all the different new technologies, the new standards, the new policies, you know, the new um, blogs and books and presentations that are done on accessibility. So I benefit from this as much as everyone else. Um, it's just hard to keep track. You know, my role at Microsoft spans beyond North America, and so um, I'm also a member. What's the What's the commercial about the guy? I'm not just the I'm not just a customer of the Hair Men's Club or whatever. You're I'm also the client. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> that's it. I'm not just the president. I'm the client. I guess I should use the same spiel because you know, I, I it's true. I'm I'm in the trenches every day trying to understand how to you know make this product accessible or how to design a better website that's accessible. So. I'm still learning, and I know that everybody else is too. So, um, ultimately, the goal here, which I think is the the bottom line, which is literally why I put it on the bottom line of the slide, is we're all here to really improve the lives of, of people with disabilities around the world, uh, and we think this is our our best idea of how to do it. Um, but we would love to have you get involved, and uh, whether you're an organization, getting your organization involved. If you're an individual, you're not already involved. Please get involved. We can really use your help and expertise. Um, we'd love to share what we know. Um, and there are some companies that have already started taking our certification and building it into their formal career paths for people who are working on accessibility. And, you know, I thought that was such a great idea. It's not something I had actually thought of doing. Um, and so I think there's three companies that have already done that in the last two months. 
So it's something to think about. If you've got a career path for people working in accessibility, it may be a great thing to think about incorporating into their career development. Um, it's certainly something we are working with the Teach Access um, organization on. They're doing great work. If you don't know about them, they're also working to create you know, this push for accessibility to be part of job descriptions. Um, and so we would love to see this credential, for example, starting to show up on job descriptions related to accessibility. Um, so, you, you know, that's really, we'd love to get you involved, um, get your employees involved. And in particular, not just today, but moving forward, if there are things that we're not doing that you think we could be doing to help you be more successful, we'd love to hear that. And likewise, we always have positive feedback like everyone else. If there's something we're doing right, love to hear that as well, too. So with that, I really wanted to, to pause and, and leave some time for Q&A. So um, let's open it up. Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rob, for uh, you know being involved in and, like you said, volunteering your time for IAAP. It's impressive to see people with so much to be done. Um, and multiple ways to tackle it for you all have really pushed forward and, and made some good progress uh, in addition with Teach Access and everyone. So just thank you for your, your time and efforts there. I want to encourage people to use the chat window to chime in with questions. We've got some that have come in, um, and I've got one here that I'll read out to you. It says, when is the next CPAC exam, or is this something I can take any time? Great question. Um, I believe we do have specific time windows um, because what we'd like to do is, as we just did one that ended July 18th, it takes about four to six weeks to score all those and get the results back to the participants. Um, so there are typically, at least at this point in the way we've approached it so far, there are exam windows. And the next one is, I believe, October. And so happy to share information on that uh, on specific dates. but. Yeah, I believe it's October, and it is not specifically tied to a location. You can take it online as well. And so uh, we work with um, a testing, a professional testing company that has centers around the world as well. So if you do want to go into a physical center or um, need that for an accommodation, we have that available as well. So yeah, so there's a lot of flexibility in how to take the exam. Great. Um, I have some other uh, specific IAAP questions here, but before I do that, uh, because of your um, vast experience um, in uh, the accessibility field, I wanted to take a step back and just ask you um, how you felt like the culture of accessibility um, has been changing in recent years, both uh, nationally and then also from the international perspective you have. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. If we look back about five or six years, there was a lot of fragmentation, a lot of risk of fragmentation in accessibility standards. Uh, and so a lot of us were spending time really trying to persuade different companies or different countries around the world to harmonize, um, not only in, in the standards, but also in even the definition of accessibility and certainly in the laws and regulations they put in place. Um, so I feel like we've made some fantastic progress there. I think WCAG 2.0 really was a great unifying force for that. Um, I think Section 508 in the U.S. and the U.N. CRPD um, are very complementary um, uh, with other things that are happening in Europe, like the there's the European 301549, which is um, in some respects similar to 508 here in the U.S. Um, but a lot of these things are also being revised to start to bring in, um, you know, some of the to directly, in particular, it, to directly reference international standards. And so I think that's one of the big trends we've seen is I think we're spending less time now um, focusing on harmonization, um, but and more on what are the right solutions, what's the reasonable way to actually develop a, a public policy that can be enforceable but is realistic and achieves the goal. Um, culturally, I think also there has been just in the you know the consultants, the individual people on the ground that are doing the hard work of of advising organizations or building you know, solutions and content. Um, I think there's been a lot of really healthy discussion in the last three or four years um, about things like IWP and individual consultants and and how we all work to be effective together. And I feel like um, I think at least my perspective has certainly evolved in that way, and I feel like there's a lot of people starting to come together and think about 
how they can leverage the work of other people um, and work together more. We've seen you know, consolidation in the assistive technology market um, even in the last couple of months with you know, um, AI squared and um, JAW, the Freedom Scientific, those guys merging, and before that it was Window Eyes and so GW Micro. And so in both the technology, I think we've seen convergence. I think um, as a profession, we're starting to see convergence between um, communities and bodies of knowledge and activities. I think now with things like the Teach Access that's driving education into the university curriculum and IWAP building it into the workplace and the career path, I think we're starting to see alignment appear there as well. So my answer to your question is I feel like accessibility is definitely moving in the right direction. There's a lot of technical problems still to be solved. There's a lot of cultural issues where people still don't really understand it. Um, they either over, oversimplify it or discount it. Um, you know, and that could be business leaders or people who just aren't familiar with what it really means. Um, and I think the one trend that will ultimately make all of that go away is aging and the use of mobile technologies. Uh, you know, we're all aging. We all need more flexible solutions. Um, and with mobile devices taking over the world, um, that puts all of us in situations where the way we use that technology is constrained. And I've I personally have found that to be one of the most compelling um, moments of enlightenment, I'll say, for people who are new to accessibility. It just talks to them about how difficult it is to use that mobile phone in a really noisy environment, a really bright sunlight, or when their hands are full. And you can start to bridge into an experience that they can relate to. Uh, and then you introduce them to the disability community, and, and it all just kind of melts away. So I think, I think it's really positive. Um, but there's plenty of work left to do, that's for sure. Yep. Well, um, again, thank you for this work and for sharing it. Um, extra thanks for all you do and Pete to kind of push this culture of accessibility forward um, and the discussions we've shared and the connections you've made for us. Uh, I think it's an exciting space and place and important work and really appreciate your um, efforts and all of it. So um, folks see the information on the slide there. If you have other questions or want to follow up, uh, you can definitely reach out to the info questionnaire and they'll be able to uh, to um, uh, answer questions for you. You can also reach out to us at Pete and we'll do it. Um, but it's really all the time we have for today. Uh, definitely visit their website. You see there on the screen www.accessibilityassociation.org. Um, and don't forget to join us for next month's Pete Talk. Uh, it's Thursday, September 15th, so right in the middle of the month. It's an early third Thursday always at 2 p.m., and our guest is going to be Greg Vanderheiden, who will be discussing the GPII, the Global Public Inclusive Infrastructure, and the research um, that they're doing on that and the, the potential it has to really impact the employment of people dis with disabilities. It's some, some really cool work, some really uh, futurist stuff that, that we uh, look forward to hearing about from Greg. So you can find the registration link on PeteWorks.org, uh, look for an email with it, uh, we'd love to have you join us. So in closing, just a, a big special thanks, Rob, for speaking with us today. And uh, for all of you who took the time to join us, uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate you making the time. All right. Thanks, Rob. Emily Liddell has left the conference. Has left the conference.